Hi guys, in this video I want to show you how to take your looping P5JS sketch and turn it into an animated GIF. So I have an example on the desktop here. Um, so this is just a compiled GIF from my P5JS sketch. So the first thing we need to do is save out all of the frames of our P5JS sketch. So we go into the code um, and in setup we need to use a function called save frames. Um, save frames. Cool. It's really important that you put this in the setup function, not in the draw function or any other function. This has to go at the end of setup. Um, otherwise you'll start downloading infinite files and it'll be a mess. Cool. So the first argument is the name of the files. So I'm going to call mine Ben. Uh, uh, ben underscore Jack. DSDM142 P3 underscore cool. Then the second argument um, is the file type. This can be either PNG or JPG. Uh, quick rule of thumb is you want to use JPG or JPEG uh, if you've got lots of gradients in your image and you want to use PNG if you've just got lots of block colors. So for me I've got lots of block colors. I'm going to use PNG. The next argument um, this is how many seconds worth of footage you want to save. For me, I only need two seconds. You might need a lot more than that, depending on how long uh, each of your loops is. The reason I only need two seconds is because the, by the time this tiny rectangle in here has expanded out um, a little bit and the next one come, has come in, that's already a loop. So for me, uh, my loop is really actually very short. And then the final argument is how many frames per second. Just put in 22 here, um, which is, I believe, the maximum. Um, cool. So this will save roughly 22 times 2 frames. So it will save roughly 44 frames, but it never works as expected because P5JS's uh, save frames function is just a bit, um, a bit bizarre. Um, but it works sufficiently for our purposes. Cool, so if I save that, then all I've added is this thing next to save frames. If I hit refresh, get this little pop-up, um, just click allow, and that will allow it to download bucket loads of frames. So now if I go into my downloads and I put these into a folder, um, and I call this folder, uh, mm, I'm going to call it DSDN142 project 3 frames and I'm going to put this in uh, my sketch folder um, because it's good to keep all of your files in the same place so I'm just going to put this with, with everything else. Cool, so if you had any trouble with saving your frames um, so for example, sometimes what happens is uh, your download settings uh, are a bit funny and if you hit refresh, it'll only download one image. Um, uh, and you might, uh, that, yeah, the way to fix that is there's a little arrow up here which is the download settings. You just need to select always allow whatever file to download multiple files. And then if you run it again, it, it will be fine. It will download all of the files that you need. Um, cool. Cool. So now um, we need to open our files in Photoshop. Um, actually, before we do that, I just want to make a quick comment. Another way that the save frame functions is bizarre is that our canvas is 500 by 500, right? But actually, um, uh, save frames always doubles the resolution of the canvas for some unknown reason. Um, so these images are all a thousand by a thousand and we'll, we'll fix that in Photoshop shortly. Cool. So in Photoshop, instead of creating a new document, we don't need to do that. We, all, what, all we need to do is go down to scripts and go load files into stack. What this does is it, um, uh, if we navigate to our files, click on the top one, hold down shift and click on the bottom one, that will select them all. Um, this is going to load them all into a single file as separate layers, which is just so incredibly helpful, um, although this is going to take a while. 
Okay, so now we've got all of the files loaded into Photoshop. The first thing to do is re uh, put the layers in the right order. You'll notice that this um, that all of the layers are out of order. It goes 0, 1, 10, 11, and that's because it's sorting them in alphabetical order rather than numerical order. So we need to um, go down and you just need to search around and, and kind of find all of the um, images. So for example, uh, frame 2 is down there and frame 3 should be near the bottom for me. Here's how many frames I've got. Cool, so frame 2, 3. Great, so you'll need to rearrange these and just make sure that they're all in the right order. Um, Cool. So now all my frames are in the right order. I need to adjust the size because as I was saying just a second ago, um, uh, they save as a thousand by thousand pixel images, but you we, we want 500 by 500 pixel images. Okay, so the way you do that is you click on image and you go image size and just uh, type in 500 here. Um, make sure width and height are both 500 pixels. Make sure that's set to pixels, not anything else. Click OK. Cool. So that's uh, resized it. Now what we need to do is we need to bring up the timeline box. That's this box down here. Um, but you probably don't have it. Just click Window and go down to Timeline. And that will bring up this little box. We want to click this big button here that says Create Frame Animation. Click that and it uh, brings up an empty box. Now what we want to do is we want to turn all of our layers into uh, frames and that's very easy. Click on this little three lined thingy here and go make frames from layers and boom that takes all of our layers or all of our files and uh, turns them into frames. The only problem is it actually does it backwards. It does it back to front for some reason so uh, frame 31 becomes uh, sorry, layer 31 becomes frame 1 and layer 0 becomes the last frame. So it's around the wrong way. So we reverse it by clicking on these three bars again and going reverse frames. And that just fixes that. Cool. So at this point, um, we need to find out, uh, find exactly the point where our animation loops. So we want to be, basically what we're looking for is a frame that is exactly the same as um, we want to find a frame that's exactly the same as our first frame. So I want to find the first frame that's just the same as this. So maybe I'll go to 15. Oh, no, 16. Okay, so I can see that it's coming soon. 18. Is 18 the same as frame 1? Ah, oh, okay, so 18, uh, frame 18 for me seems to be the same as frame 1. Um, if you can see that. Um, so what I want to do is I want to select frame 18 and then hold down shift and select frame 32, uh, the very last frame, and I want to delete them. Why am I deleting 18? Because 18 is the same as frame 1, right? And we don't want two frames that are the same directly after each other because that will cause like a, a slight judder. Whereas if 17, if it goes from frame 17, um, automatically to frame 1, then that kind of blends that animation in nicely. So we want to delete frame 18 through all the rest of the frames, in my case anyway, your again your loop frame, the, your frame that's the same as your first frame is going to be different. Um, yep, delete these frames, great. Next thing to do is to um, select all of the frames we have, um, again click on the last one and hold down shift and click on the first one. And then we want to set the, the frame delay, so like how fast our animation goes. And I want to set this to 0 0.03. Um, this is a good, I don't know, fast, smooth speed. Um, if you want it to go slower, you can set that to a slightly bigger number. If you want it to go faster, actually you can't really go faster than 0 0.03. Most browsers don't support that. The final thing is to click um, on this once here. Um, this is how many times it loops, and we want to go forever, right? And then you can hit play and just make sure that it um, make sure that all of the, the frames are in order um, and that it's looping nicely and it is. It's not very smooth yet but once we export it that should be fine. So that's all. Um, now all we need to do is export it. So if we go export, save for web, 
Um, now the settings here are going to be different for you than me. Um, they're going to be different for everyone. You need to play around with these a bit. So, um, first of all, we need to. You need to um, basically uh, decide whether you want to dither or not. Um, so, dithering is a thing that happens when gifs are saved, which because GIFs can only have a certain number of colors in the image, um, up to 256 colors, um, if you've got a nice gradient, um, often that'll mean that you get like banding through it. So dithering breaks up the banding. Um, if you've got gradients, you'll probably need to choose one of these three diffusion uh, dithering patterns. Um, uh, click on each one and see what it looks like in your image. If you've just got block colors, just select no dither, it's fine. In my case, I don't need to dither because I don't have any gradients. Now, here is how many colors are going to be in your GIF. You want to select the smallest number that looks good. So like, um, so the more colors you have, the bigger the file size. And we want it small so that it loads quickly on the web, right? But too few colors, for example, this is four colors, looks terrible. So you want to find the, the first setting that looks good. So 16 and then I got 32 and I'm like, oh, that actually does look nice. Then I got to 64 and I'm like, um, oh, it's a, there's a subtle difference, um, but there's not much difference actually. So maybe 32 colors is enough for me um, in my image. This is gonna be different for you. you. You might need to go all the way down to 256 or not. But again, you just wanna choose the smallest number you can, you can get away with. Cool. Um, I don't need transparency, I don't have any transparent parts in my image, so that's it. Click save, select file name, I'm saving over an old file, so I'll save that. And if I go to the desktop and run this, we have a nice animating looping uh, GIF um, saved from a P5JS sketch.